Hey guys, it's Katie. Thanks for stopping by my channel. Today's video is going to be a crochet tutorial. I'm going to show you how to make these super cute and fun Christmas stockings. These are a lot of fun. I've been having a lot of fun playing around with this. You can see I have a couple versions here, but this is the same pattern. And I have a larger one here too. You can see it's made the same way. It's just scaled up to be larger and I did it in hokey colors, Virginia Tech colors. But I actually I started with the larger pattern, I scaled it down to um, play around with it, and I think the scaled down version is cute too. So this is what we're going to do today. I'm going to show you step by step how to do this. I'll also put the pattern, I'll write it up in written form and put it on my blog, so there'll be a link to that if that's easier for you. i also have the timestamps down there, so if you just want to see a specific point in the video, check down there, that way you don't have to click around. And um, I also have my links to my social media, so if you make a stocking from my pattern, I would love to see pictures of it, so you can find me on Instagram and Facebook. You can post pictures there so I can see. I'd love to see them. So um, I'm going to talk a little bit about how these stockings are put together, so you have an overview. If you want to skip this part, like I said, there's timestamps down below. Alright, so like I said, these stockings are made from the same pattern, so I'm going to tell you how to do and make them step by step, but I'll also give you ideas for where you can kind of deviate from the pattern. So these are our toe up patterns. They start here at the toe and they work up. They're done in continuous spiral rounds. So it goes around and around and around and around. Instead of joining rounds, chaining up, going around, joining the round, chaining up and going around. When you do that, you'll see like a little gap or it almost look like a seam that runs down the whole length of the, the pattern. So to avoid that, we're just going to go around and around and around and around. So I love doing continuous spiral rounds whenever possible. That's how I do my hat patterns, my uh, mitten patterns, my bonnet patterns. Anything that I can do in the round, I do in a spiral round. Because I don't like seeing that seam, it also makes it easy to do stripes without having a lot of ends to hide at the end. This striped um, stocking, I don't have to hide the ends at every color change. I only have, uh, for this white, it starts down here at the toe. It's the same piece of yarn that goes all the way up to the top. The heel is separate. There are a couple ends in the heel, but the rest is just one piece of white yarn and one piece of red yarn, so there's not a lot of ends to hide. Um, so, let's see, what else? It is, it goes up to the heel. You'll construct the heel, and then you continue on. Um, and then for the cuff, the cuff you can add or leave it off. The cuff is done in rib knit stitching, or rib stitch I guess it's called. So this is just done with single crochets, so it gives it a really cute um, cuff look, but it's not that hard to do. I'll show you how to do that. If you wanted to cuff but you didn't want to do that, you could always just make your stocking longer and just fold it over, or do the last few rows in a contrasting color and then fold it over. You would have to make it longer for it to look right. but leave the cuff off, I think it looks cute too. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to do, the one I'm going to do for the video, I'm going to do contrasting heel, toe, and cuff, but the rest of the boot is going to be solid. So that's like three different versions, all from the same pattern we can do. So I'm starting with my white yarn here. This is just worsted weight, red heart, super saver. My hook is a size H hook but you could use any similar size hook if that's what you had, G, H, I, whatever matches your yarn. We're making this based on measurements and proportions, so gauge and hook size and all that's not super duper important, and like I said, we're making a stocking, so it's not a garment that needs to fit a body. It can be you know, a little bit larger, a little bit small, it's fine. Okay, what else do you need? Simple things, um, a, a needle for weaving in your ends, scissors, and a ruler or a tape measure so that you can get your uh, measurements right. Alright, so I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. This starts with a magic loop. If you don't know how to do a magic loop, I will put a link to somebody else's video in the description. Um, but the way that I do it, I will quickly show you, and then you can review it elsewhere if you don't know how to do it. I wrap my yarn around two or three fingers, bring the yarn over top of the other yarn, making an X. I put my thumb right in the center where the X meets, I take my hook, I go underneath the first yarn, which is the under yarn, and then I hook the second yarn, which is the over yarn, and I pull it up onto my hook, slide my fingers out, making sure that ring and the tail are held together here, and we're going to work over this tail and the loop, and I'm going to yarn over and pull through just to secure that magic loop. Now that first yarn over pull through does not count as a stitch. 
Now what I want to do is I want to work around this ring. I want to put 12 stitches in this ring to for my beginning round and I want to work over the ring and this loose tail here. So you want to hold them together and treat them as one. And I'm going to put 12 stitches around. I want to do double crochets but I can't start with double crochets because when I come around again I'll be running into the side of those stitches where I want to go kind of slide up over top of them. So I need to ramp up. My first stitch will be a small stitch, my second stitch will be a medium stitch, my third stitch will be a tall stitch which is our double crochet. So we're working our way up to a double crochet. So my first stitch is going to be a single crochet. So yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through. That's stitch number one. Stitch number two will be our medium stitch which is a half double crochet. So to do that you yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three loops on the hook. That's stitch number two. Stitch number three is our tall stitch which is a double crochet. So yarn over, insert your hook into the magic ring, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through two loops on the hook. That's stitch number three. So we have one, two, three. We need to put nine more to make a total of 12 stitches and we want to do double crochet from here on out. Pretty much the rest of the stocking is done in double crochets. So we'll just yarn over, put stitch number four, stitch number five, stitch number six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So that's what we look like right now. You can double check by counting your stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. It's helpful to count, especially if you count backwards, because it makes it very clear where your single crochet. It's actually on the side here because it's kind of going up this ramp here. So you're going to be working right here in the side. Um, it's under the two loops like you normally would under a stitch, but you have to visually see where that is. So it's helpful to count. So you just put 12 stitches. So you count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So you can see that's the stitch we're going to work in when we come around. So that's our first 12 stitches. Now we'll pull the loose tail to tighten that magic ring. You don't want to tighten it all the way because like I said that single crochet is kind of down in there so you don't want it to be hidden by tightening this too much so leave it a little bit open and we're going to start working in this single crochet and we're going to go all the way around. We're going to put two double crochets in each stitch around. So we're going to go from 12 stitches to 24 stitches. If it's helpful you can use a stitch marker. I usually just count I will do a stitch marker in case that's helpful for you um, to see how to do that. I just use a piece of contrasting yarn. You can use whatever you have handy. So what I'll do is I'll just lay that so I know when I come back around to that. Just lay it over there. And right there is my single crochet I'm going to work in. Too much. Okay. So we're going to put two double crochets in this single crochet under that loop and that loop. So those are the two loops of your single crochet. Yarn over, insert your hook into the two loops of that single crochet. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. In that same stitch, where we just put this stitch, right in that spot we're going to put a second stitch. So yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So now that's two double crochets in the first stitch, which was your single crochet. Your next stitch is right here. This is your half double crochet. We're going to put two double crochets in it. Let's see. Hopefully it's not blurry. It's hard for me to tell when it's this zoomed in. We'll put two double crochets right there. One, two. The next stitch is your first double crochet. Put two there. We're just going to put two in every stitch all the way around until we come back to this stitch marker and we have 24 stitches. Alright, so 
So I worked all the way around to my stitch marker. And go around and count my stitches. Pull up a long loop so I don't lose my work. It doesn't accidentally get pulled out. I have one, two, three. Zoom in. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Okay, so that's 24 stitches around. And for the smaller stocking, that's all the number of increases you need to do. If you want to do a larger stocking, you would just go around again and again and again, adding 12 stitches per row or per round. So this is all the farther that I need to increase for this smaller size stocking. If you wanted to make the stocking larger, you would continue adding um, stitches and increases so this grows out in sort of a flat disc like this. So you want to add 12 stitches to each round. So we had 12 stitches in the first round and we added 12 stitches. So to increase 12 stitches by 12 stitches, you have to increase in every stitch and that's what we did here. Now we have 24 stitches. If we need to increase by 12 stitches, we would need to increase every other stitch. So every other stitch, you would put two double crochets in the stitch, and then the alternating stitches, you would just put one in. And then for the round, if you go beyond that to the next round, um, then you would do your increase every third stitch, and just put one double crochet in each stitch in the other two stitches. Hopefully that makes sense. If you watch um, my spiral hat videos, I have a couple spiral hat videos it's explained in that way. But to, in order to get your flat disc, you want to increase each round by 12 stitches. And that's the most organized way that I know to do that. So here you have 12 stitches. Your next round, you would have 24. Your next round, you would have 36. The next round, you'd have 48. And you can stop at ed the end of any one of those rounds. But because this is done in a spiral, you can also stop just halfway through a round. So you don't, you're not limited to just 12 stitches or 24 stitches or 36 stitches. You can stop at any point that your, your disc is as big as you want it. So these um, stockings are done 24 stitches. These ones are done 40 stitches. So I went around 12, 24, 36, and then instead of going to 48, I just added four more stitches to get to 40 and then stopped. So that's this row here. And then we're gonna do one more row where we're not doing any more increases and that's gonna start to take this from a flat disc to a cupped disc and it'll start to curl up that way. So that's what we're going to do. Once we get the number of stitches that we need, we're going to do one more round in the toe color just going around one stitch in each stitch around. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this tail to tighten that uh, ring here in the middle. And when you pull a magic ring, it seems like if you pull it, it seems like it's done and it seems tight, but if you pull a little bit more, there's just a tiny bit more usually and that pulls it nice and tight and it will never pull out. So don't pull it so much that you snap your, your thread but um, pull it till it seems like it's done and then just give it one more little tug and you'll find a lot of times there's just a little bit more give in there. Okay, so we're going to do that last round for the toe and it's just going to be one double crochet in each stitch around. So you have whatever number of stitches at the end of this row, the end of the next row you should have the same number of stitches. So I'm going to actually move my contrasting yarn for my stitch marker and I'll go ahead and work 24 stitches around. Putting, If I could get this to work, putting one double crochet in each stitch all the way around. Okay, so I've gone all the way around. You can see my flat disc is starting to cup and from here if you're going to keep your um, toe and your foot the same color, then you would not fasten this off. You would just keep going, and these stitches would keep going around and around, and you would just put one stitch in each stitch around. You can see here's our increases. Here's where we stopped increasing, and now we're just adding one stitch in each stitch around. It doesn't increase anymore. These two lines are parallel to each other, whereas this is more increasing. Once you get to the point where you're not increasing, increasing anymore, you're going to just put one stitch in each stitch around, it's going to grow up this way. And you can just keep going around and around until this is as long as you want it. For mine, that is 
it's about five inches by maybe three and three quarters inches or let's see 13 centimeters by 10 centimeters so if that's how you want it to be all one color then you would not fasten off here if you want your toe color to be a stripe one of your stripes if you want it to continue it all into the foot of your stocking then um, you would not cut the yarn but you do need to uh, finish this off we can't just keep going from this tall double crochet so just like we ramped down by doing a or ramped up by doing a small medium and large stitch we're gonna ramp down by doing a medium and small stitch so we have our large stitch the next stitch I would do a half double crochet for a medium stitch and then a single crochet for my small stitch and then what I do is I slip stitch in that same stitch just to bring it all the way down and then I would fasten that off um, like I said if I'm gonna continue on with stripes I would at, treat this as if I had just joined this color on okay if I were doing stripes but the stripe was not the toe color if I was doing two colors other than the toe color then I would take this off um, just fasten it off cut my thread pull it through weave that end in at the end so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do contrasting heel and toe and I'm gonna do the boot in red um, so you would treat it the same way so I'm gonna do the boot in solid red so I'm just gonna be joining on one color the red I don't need this anymore I'm just gonna be joining on the one color the red if I were doing stripes I would be joining them on equally spaced around this so if I were going to do red and white stripes I would have left this attached and my white would be starting here I would start my red here and you can either just eyeball it or you can count if you have 24 stitches you need to know there should be 12 stitches here and 12 stitches there um, or you can just eyeball it if you wanted to do three colors which on a stocking this size I think would be pushing it but a larger stocking would probably work you would put your yarns starting equally so you would have your white here and then maybe red here and green here and like I said you know your number of stitches so you could just divide it out evenly or eyeball it if you're doing two or three colors stripes that are different than the toe color then this end will just be woven in and it won't be continuing on in any way and you would just join on your yarn so two colors you would join opposite each other so that they're evenly spaced three colors you would evenly space around this circle okay so I'm just not going to be joining any I'm just joining one color on because my boots just going to be one color so you can join on anywhere on this ring in theory this ring is perfectly symmetrical in reality it's not perfectly symmetrical because you've ramped down here um, so you can in theory attach it anywhere I just wouldn't attach it right here because this is already slightly imperfect here and if you attach your yarn here then it would just I think emphasize that point whereas if you go anywhere else it would pretty much um, hide that point so I'm just gonna insert my hook anywhere along the way and I'm gonna join on my yarn you can join on the yarn any way that you want this is how I do it I hold the yarn on the back side of my work using any free finger yarn over pull up a loop yarn over pull through and I tighten that stitch down I do not count that as any stitch that's just attaching the yarn onto that stitch my next stitch will be beginning ramping up to begin the, the spiraling work here so I'm gonna do the same thing I did before I'm gonna do a small medium and a large stitch single crochet half double crochet double crochet and I'm gonna work in the same stitch because like I said this for me doesn't count however you join on new colors more power to you this is just how I do it so I'm gonna go in that same spot yarn over pull up a loop yarn over pull through two and again I'll tug on that tail to pull that where I attached it just pull it in a little bit so it's not showing next stitch I'm gonna do a half double crochet yarn over insert your hook yarn over pull up a loop yarn over pull through all three loops on the hook next stitch I'm gonna do the double crochet insert your hook or sorry yarn over insert your hook yarn over pull up a loop yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two now just like the last row of the toe we're just working one stitch in each stitch around because we're gonna just start the tube part the part that's um, got the parallel lines so we're gonna continue that and we're just putting one stitch in each stitch around 
we just did this ramp up so that when we come back again we can smoothly go up to the next row. So for the foot part here, that's what we're going to be doing. And we're just going to put however many rows to make it as long as we want. And you can, depending on how you want your proportions to look, you, if you want it to be a long skinny one versus a short fat one, then you can make your proportions however you want. So I'm just going to work some rows of double crochets, putting one stitch in each stitch around. And I think I have one, two, three, four, like five or six rows for this size, but that just depends on your yarn size, your hook size, your um, you know your tension, and like I said, how long you want it, how you know proportional you want it, and your beginning chain, or your um, your your total number of stitches there. All right, so I'm coming to the point where I'm ramping down from where the um, toe was fastening off. And I'm just going to continue going and putting one stitch in each stitch down that ramp. The last stitch is the single crochet. Um, but I won't be working in that last slip stitch. That was just me fastening off. And then I'll just go off of that into the next stitch, which is this one right here. You can see how I've come down there. So th that's the last part of the other row, and now I'm working into the row below it. This is going around in a spiral. Just little tricks you have to learn once you're working in the spiral, but like I said, I think the benefits of it way outweigh the benefits, um, outweigh the uh, the little tricks you have to learn. Alright, so I've come around. I just put my last double crochet in my last white stitch and my next stitch will go into the single crochet, the first single crochet, red single crochet that I've done here. So where I joined on the red, we've come all the way around and we're about to bump up on top of those red stitches. Um, so when you do this, sometimes there can be a little gap. So if I put my double crochet in there, you can see there's a little gap because we're kind of jumping up onto those stitches. When you come around again, that will kind of tighten up. It'll be less noticeable. And you can also hide that on the bottom part of your toe. But I don't really like the way that that looks, so I kind of fudge it a little bit. I'll show you what I do. If it's too confusing for you, feel free to just put that double crochet in the single crochet and continue on. Um, what you can do is, after the fact, you can use this end, as you weave it in, you can kind of go between those stitches and tighten that up a little bit. What I like to do is, I don't even know what the stitch is called, it's kind of, it's like kind of double crochet two together, but it's kind of not, because it's not two stitches. You just want to put one stitch in this stitch, but I also want to kind of bridge that gap. So let me show you what I do. Feel free to do this or not do this. It's 100% up to you. But I yarn over like I'm doing the double crochet. I'll insert the hook into the stitch that that single crochet is in. So this is still in those that white stitch. I don't want to add a stitch there because that stitch has already been occupied, but I just want to kind of bridge that gap. So I'm going to yarn over and pull up a loop, and then I'm going to go into that single crochet, and I'm going to yarn over and pull up a loop. Now I have four loops on my hook, and I'm going to yarn over and I'm going to pull through three because this loop is just kind of spanning the gap in that in between place. And then I'm going to yarn over and pull through two. So in theory, I took one stitch and I put one stitch into it. I, it's basically the same height as a double crochet. It just has that extra little loop to kind of tack it down a little bit like that. And I think it makes it makes that gap a little bit less noticeable. Like I said, it's up to you if you want to do that or not. Um, there's a couple ways to get around that. So I think probably um, weaving in with that red tail, since it's right there and available anyway, and you need to weave that in anyway, would be a way to do it if you didn't want to do that weird stitch. I can show you again, because I know it's a little confusing. There might be a name for the stitch, but I'm just going to call it what it is. It's a, it's a double crochet. It's a modified double crochet. So yarn over, insert your hook into the stitch that the single crochet is in. Yarn over, pull up a loop, 
insert your hook into the single crochet where your stitch should have gone in the first place. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through three loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two. Okay? And then from here, it's just going around and around and around. One double crochet in each stitch around. And when you come back around, this stitch is still just one stitch, so you won't have to do that every time. Just that first one. The next stitch is going to be in the half double crochet here, which was the medium stitch ramping up. Just put a regular double crochet there. And the next stitch is the double crochet. Put a double crochet in that. And then just go around and around and around, adding as many rows as you want until your foot part is as long as you want. I will add my, my rows of stitching and I will come back once it's about five inches from the tip of the toe to the edge where I'm crocheting. Okay, so I have my rounds here. All right, so I added enough rounds to make the foot as long as I want it. And I forgot to mention, if you're doing the striped one, like I said, you would attach the two colors opposite each other. You would need to leave both attached at all times and you would only be able to work one round in each color at a time because you're going to work a round of red and then come back over it with white. And then you would need to put those white stitches in to do your next row of red. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, but you would attach them opposite each other and you would work one color around. You would let go of that without cutting the thread off of the big ball of yarn. Pull up a big loop so your work doesn't excellent get pulled out pick up the white um, stitches and you would work these stitches in and then go you know go all the way around till you run out of red stitches pull up a big loop on the white and then um, pick up the red yarn and work those stitches so you're gonna have to have your stitches kind of chasing each other so um, when you get to the point the first time your red yarn comes up over the white and the white comes up over the red you would have to do what I did when my red came up over itself you would have to do that each time on the first row only and then once you get up over that hump then your yarn colors would be chasing each other hopefully that makes sense and that's clear um, if not feel free to leave me comments down below I can either add photographs to the blog post to make it clear or I could do a separate video showing how to do the striped one I think if you've done stripes in the spiral before that should be clear to you if it's not clear to you and you've never done stripes in the spiral then Nothing that I say short of showing you step by step would make it easier to understand, I think. So let me know in the comments if you want to see the striped one in its own tutorial. I should have made that more clear before I added all these rows. But anyway, I have the foot part here. So that's the toe and the foot, and we're about to add the heel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look closely and see if there's any imperfections that I want to hide. And... I think overall this looks really good. I wouldn't say there's anything super glaring. I can see where the um, red came up over top of itself and I can see where the white came down and uh, fastened off. So right around here, like I said, it doesn't look terrible but that is the only imperfection. Going all the way around it looks perfect. That's the part that I want to have hidden. So I want to flatten my toe this way. I don't want that to be right in the middle. Like I said, it's not terrible looking, but I'd rather that be hidden. So I want to flatten it so that part is hidden right under the tip of the toe. You can see on the striped one where the red attaches, I have that hidden, hidden under the bottom of the toe. So you don't see it, whether it's on this side or this side. Unless you're looking underneath the bottom of the toe, you'd never see that. So that's on the bottom of the toe. And we're going to flatten this out and we're going to attach the heel. All right, so my imperfection is right here, and I want to attach the heel here. So that's the part that I want to do right here. So I need to get my working yarn out of the way, so I am going to add a few more stitches just to get that working yarn on the top side since the heel is going to be attached on the bottom side. If you're doing um, a stripe and you have two colors, you would just work both colors up, just so that they're up and out of the way. Okay, so that is, pull this long loop here, 
and I just do that just in case this yarn gets tugged accidentally it won't pull out stitches necessarily you'd have to really tug on it to lose stitches so that's what I do when I let go of a yarn so this is the bottom like the sole of the foot this is the toe this is the bottom side of the toe that's where that imperfection is right here is where I'm gonna add the heel and the heel and the heel is going to be attached on, it's going to make an hourglass shaped uh, shape. And then I'm going to seam the heel here. There's a small seam right here and a small seam right here. And that will shape the heel and then basically our yarn is right here. And after the heel is shaped, then we'll just pick up that yarn, go up around the top and just keep going. So you'll see how that works. The um, size of the heel, you can change the size of the heel. My recommendation is half the total number of stitches. So for this is 24, I want 12 stitches for my first row of my heel. On the larger ones that were 40, my heel started at 20 stitches. So I'm going to attach. Well, first I want to find where I want to attach. So I have this folded, my imperfections right here on the bottom. And so this is the, the bottom. I want to count. Since I'm doing 12, I'm going to do 6 up this side and 6 up this side, just so that it's even here. So 12 stitches right here. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 on this side, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I want to attach my yarn there so that I have 6 here and 6 here, a total of 12 stitches. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This will be the first stitch that I work into. I want to join on my yarn. Like I said, you can join on your yarn however you want. This is just how I do it. I hold the yarn from the back, I yarn up, over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through, tighten that down as much as possible. And then I'm going to put my first stitch in that same stitch. So I want to do double crochets, but I need to ramp up. So I'm going to do the same thing I did. Um, single crochet, then a half double crochet, and then the double crochet. And on the other side, we're going to ramp down again. So this first stitch will be a single crochet. Now in the next stitch, I'm going to do a half double crochet. And in the third stitch, I'll put a double crochet. So that's our first three stitches. And our last three stitches will be going back down. So double crochet, half double crochet, single crochet. So this is stitch one, two, three out of 12. This will be four is a double crochet. 5 is a double crochet, 6 is a double crochet, 7 is a double crochet, 8 is a double crochet, 9 is a double crochet, 10 is a double crochet, and now we're going to ramp down. So 11 is going to be a half double crochet, and 12 will be a single crochet. So that's what it looks like so far. Now we're going to actually turn our work. We've been working in rounds and rounds and rounds, but this will be the only time where we're actually going to be turning our work on the main part of the stocking. I'm going to chain two, and I'm going to work double crochets across, and I want to do two decreases at the beginning here and two decreases at the end. So I have 12 stitches across. When I do two decreases, I'll be removing two stitches from the beginning of the row and two stitches from the end. So I'm actually removing four stitches. I'm going to go from 12 stitches to eight stitches. So the way that I do my decrease is I do double crochet two together. So what I'm going to do is yarn over, insert my hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. I have two hooks or two loops on my hook. Normally to finish the double crochet I'd yarn over and pull through two, but I'm not. I'm just going to leave this incomplete. I'm going to go to the next stitch. I'm going to yarn over, insert my hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Now I have three loops on my hook and I have two incomplete double crochets. So to finish them off, I'm going to yarn over and pull through all three loops on the hook. Let me do that again. Yarn over and pull through all three loops on the hook. So I've taken two stitches and turned them into one. I need to do that a second time because I want to do two decreases at the beginning and two decreases at the end. So I'm going to yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, insert into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over and pull through three. That's my second decrease. So that's 
two stitches, the first two stitches of my eight stitches. For the middle part here, I'm just going to put one double crochet in each stitch across. And then um, stitch number seven will be a decrease and stitch number eight will be a decrease. So you should have four stitches left here. So over these four stitches, I'm going to turn these four into two by doing two decreases. Same way that I did the beginning. So double crochet two together. Okay, and I'm going to do that again for the last two stitches. Oops. Okay, so you can see it's kind of going in. It's going to go in one more row. We're going to do a third row, and we're going to do um, decrease two at the beginning and the end. So we're going to go from eight to four stitches. So I'm going to chain two, turn my work, do the double crochet two together for the first two stitches. So that's one stitch made, one double, double crochet two together made. And we're going to do a second one over the next two stitches. Okay. Now I have four stitches left and that's for the decrease down. So I'm basically going from eight stitches to four stitches and it's four double crochet twos together. So I've done the first two for the beginning and now I'm going to do the next two for the end. But basically it's all the way across. There's nothing in the middle because this um, stocking is so small. Alright, so that's four stitches now and it's decreased even more now. So for this larger stocking, because it's larger, your heel needs to be larger. It's the same concept. You're going to do half of your total number of stitches is going to be your heel. So this was 24 stitches around. My heel is 12 stitches. This stocking is 40 stitches around. So my heel started at 20 stitches. And you're going to do the same thing. Decrease by two stitches at the beginning and end of each row. But because you're starting with more stitches, you're going to actually have an extra row to get your decreases down and that will make your heel wider and look more proportionate to the larger stocking and it will also make your heel wider to make it look proportional. So I will have the written directions on my blog if that doesn't make sense to you. I think once you do this you can understand how to apply it to a larger stocking. You can make these stockings whatever size that you want. Um, but here we started with 12. The next row we had 8. The next row we had 4. On the larger stocking, we start with 20, we go to 16, we go to 12, we go to 8. So we had that fourth row, whereas this one we just have three rows. So once we have our four stitches across, we're going to chain two, turn the work, and for one row, we're just going to put one double crochet in each stitch across. So we'll have four double crochets. One in the first stitch, one in the second stitch, one in the third stitch, and one in the fourth stitch. So that did not decrease in, it actually went straight up. Now we're going to increase. We're going to actually make the mirror of this, what we've done here. And we're going to actually add two stitches to the beginning and two stitches to the end of each row. So we'll go from four to eight. So chain two, turn the work, and to do increases we'll just put two double crochets in each spot. So I have four spots for the four stitches across and I need to put two at the beginning. So I'll put an extra stitch in the first stitch, an extra st stitch in the second stitch. And then we need to do two at the end, which I only have two left. So I'll put two stitches in the next stitch and two stitches in the last stitch. So what I'm saying is I'm putting two stitches in each stitch across and making these four stitches turn into eight stitches. So I'm going to yarn over, insert my hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two double crochet made. I'm going to do the second double crochet in that same spot. In the next stitch I'm going to do one double crochet, two double crochet. In the next stitch I'm going to do one double crochet, two double crochets. And in the last stitch I'm going to do one double crochet and two double crochets. So you can see how it's starting to grow out again. I'm going to chain two, turn the work. 
I'm going to put two double crochet increases at the beginning and two extra stitches at the end. So I will do an increase in the first stitch, one double crochet, two double crochet, and a second increase in the next stitch, so one double crochet, two double crochet. Now I'm going to put one stitch in each stitch across until I get to the last two stitches. So just one double crochet, one double crochet in the next stitch, one double crochet in the next stitch, one double crochet in the next stitch. I have two stitches left and I'm going to put an increase in each of those to do the last two increases for the row. So one, two, and then one, So I have, let me count them just to make sure, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So I started with 12, I went down to 8, I went down to 4, and then I have 4, 8, and 12. As you can see it makes this hourglass shape. Once we get here, I'm going to fasten off. I'm going to cut a good 8 to 10 inches of yarn, because that's what we're going to use to seam the heel. So I'll pull this through. Fasten that down. This red yarn is still attached to the, the main ball of yarn there. Just let that hang out of the way. Thread my yarn needle. And what I want to do is I want to seam it here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it over. Now this is the right side, so I want to put the right sides together. And I'm going to seam. I'm going to sew the row here that has 12 stitches to the row here that has 12 stitches. And the row here that has eight stitches, I'm going to sew to the row that has eight stitches. And the row that has four stitches, I'm going to sew to the row that has eight. I'm just going to whip stitch this, or you can do however you normally seam your stitching. So I'm just going to go into that that way. Come back this way. Go up this way. I want to do it secure, so sometimes I do it a little bit loose. Not loose, but I don't pull it super tight. And then I flip this back to see the right side to make sure there's no gaps. Like if I missed a spot, there might be a gap. So even give it a little tug. There's no gaps, so I'm good. I'm going to go ahead and pull it nice and not tight, but you know what I mean. I'm going to make it firm. And now I'm just going to take my needle and just kind of thread it through here. Kind of like I'm hiding an end, but just to get to this other side. So I don't have to use a new piece of thread to do this other side, the seam on the other side. I'm just going to kind of carry it along through there. And now I'm doing the same thing. So it's folded in half, right sides together, and I just want to sew down this seam. go back and forth or do a whip stitch or I don't know you could probably even um, you know do a, a slip stitch or a single crochet with your hook if you didn't want to use a tapestry needle here give it one final look to make sure it looks nice so that's what it looks like so that is done ahead and put that excess. I'll hide those ends at the end. But for here on out, we are done with the heel. So what we've done is we took 12 stitches here, we did this whole heel thing and did all this magic and did all this sewing, and then we ended up with 12 stitches. So as far as the red yarn is concerned, as we come around, you don't have to treat it any differently than you were on these rows, because you took away 12 stitches, but you also brought in 12 stitches. So you're just going to keep going around, putting one red double crochet in each stitch around. You're going to put your hook back in, tighten it down, and just continue crocheting around. Now 
And when we get to where the heel is, I will show you that because that's the only part that's a little bit different than all the previous rows we've been doing with this red because we're not just going on a flat um, round, we're going to kind of bump up here where the heel is. I forgot to mention, when you're sewing your seam, sometimes it can be tempting to sew one of the top stitches. So what you want to do is count, you should have 12 stitches here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So these parts here, that's the side of your stitches. That's not a stitch. And you can see there's not really any two loops to work in. This is your first, whoops, your first two loops to work in. So those are your stitches. And same thing at this end. That's your last two. Let me insert my hook so you can see. That's your last two loops. But you have this here, which is kind of like the sides of the stitches. You're not going to work into that. If anything happened when you were sewing or when you were doing that last round, that number might be off. So you should probably check that before you do your um, seaming and then after you do your seaming because you can lose a stitch multiple ways there. But as long as you have 12 stitches, you're just going to continue around as if you were for these 12 stitches. So I'm going to put this last stitch in this last red stitch and I'm going to bump over here. So here, let's see. Here is my first stitch that I'm going to work into. You can see we're having that kind of that same problem where there's going to be a gap. So I'm going to treat it in a very similar way. So I'm not just going to put my stitch here. I'm going to snag it down here too and then go up there. So I yarn over, insert it down at that point. That's not a stitch that you would work into normally because this white is worked into it. So this stitch is actually occupied. I'm going to put my hook in there anyway just to kind of anchor it down there. So I'm going to insert the hook, yarn over, pull up a loop. I'm going to insert the hook in the stitch where it's supposed to be going, yarn over, pull up a loop, pull through three, pull through two. And now you don't have that gap. And now you're just going to go along the top edge of the heel, putting one stitch in each stitch around. When you come down on the back side of the heel, you'll have a similar problem that you had at the front side of the heel here with that place where the gap can form. And so we'll do the same thing. I'll show you that when we get to it. So I have about to go into my last stitch on the heel. And if I just put it in here and then work here, which would, would be my next stitch, there'll be a gap. So I'm going to work also in that stitch right here. All right, we'll try that again. Yarn over, insert it into your last white stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, insert into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, pull through three, pull through two. So that's what we have there. And then in the next stitch, just put one double crochet. And then in the next stitch, and the next stitch, and the next stitch. And you're just going to go around and around and you can kind of see where that's divoting down like that. It's much less of a, an angle than it was. And every round you do around after this will smooth it even more. So we will just keep working rounds of putting one stitch in each stitch around until the leg is as long as you want it. Okay, we're coming up to that next point where the uh, heel attached and when you come around the second time it's no big deal. You're just putting one stitch in each stitch across. Like that. And now you're up here on the heel you didn't even notice. You can see the next pass, this is the second pass over, it's much less. And you can't even hardly tell that at one point you went way down and up again. So that's what it looks like. It almost looks like one of those no-show socks. We're going to continue doing rounds um, all the way around. Um, before you get too far, it might be a good idea to go ahead and count. Make sure you still have 24 stitches 
Uh, make sure nothing got lost anywhere. Make sure no added stitches because you want this and the leg to be the same so that it looks proportional. If you have extra stitches, it'll start to fan out. If you have um, fewer stitches, it'll start to constrict. Now, if you're missing like one stitch and you're not sure where you lost it, you can either do an increase or a decrease just to get the right number of stitches. Uh, I think that it wouldn't be that noticeable. And like I said, there's a lot of little places that we've just passed. This is like the most complicated part of the stocking. And, um, you know, if it was me and I was missing a stitch, I might just do an increase somewhere on the back side where it was less noticeable and just have 24 stitches again or however many stitches you're supposed to have. So at this point, I'm just going to do rounds and rounds and rounds until the, um, the stocking is as long as I want it. And again, that's 100% up to you. For this stocking, let's see, underneath the cuff to where the heel, where we went, started again from the heel to the top. It's about six, I think six, six and a quarter inches. I think this one is probably the same. I made these pretty similar. Yeah, about six inches or 15 centimeters, or like I said, whatever you want it to be. Um, and then this one has the cuff. So you could make the uh, cuff the same, just keep making rows or change to a contrasting color and continue rows like this and fold it down or I can, um, I'll also show you how to do this ribbed cuff here. Alright, but we're in the home stretch. Starting to look like a stocking, it's starting to look cute. I will be back after I get six inches of leg attached. Okay, I'm back. I finished doing my rows for the leg and it's as long as I want now. So I'm going to fasten off the red and I'm going to, um, well I want to come to just before the back side, that's where I'm going to bring it down because I'm going to use this tail to make a hanging loop. And um, if you're doing stripes, you would want to uh, taper off each color opposite each other. So just like we joined them on opposite each other, it will just make your top edge more symmetrical. So down here on the back, I'm going to go, um, actually I might take this last stitch off so I have room to do the two to taper down. I want to go from the double crochet to the medium stitch, which is the half double crochet is what I'm doing right here, and then a single crochet like that. And then I just um, slip stitch in that same stitch just to bring it all the way down and then from here to make a hanging loop I'm just going to chain like 20, 25 however long you want the hanging loop to be make it a little bit bigger than you think it needs to be because a loop that's longer will still work, a loop that's shorter won't work Something like that. And then you can just tack this down and leave it like this. You can also, I'll show you the difference. You can also go through, sometimes when I do um, like drawstrings or things like that, I will slip stitch in each stitch all the way back down. So this loop is just a chain. And then on this one, I did the more reinforced chain. So this, I did the chain and then I slip stitched into each stitch all the way down. You could even do it single crochet all the way down. I just think it makes a more substantial, um, more sturdy hanging loop. If these are going to be hung up empty as decoration, I think a chain would be fine. If you're going to hang them with stuff in them, um, I don't know if a chain would be as substantial as it needs to be. So I do like to do um, slip stitch back down the chain. And again, you might want to make your hanging loop just a little bit more because when it comes, when you slip stitch it, it makes it a little bulky and when it comes back down, I don't know, I'm just, just erring on the side of caution. Let me tell you how many I put here so that you know. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. I did 21, which is good because I'll be, um, when I go back down, I'll skip that one so it'll actually be 20 stitches. So I chained 21 and now I'm going to slip stitch in each chain going down um, that chain. So a slip stitch is, I'm going to skip the first, the, or the last chain that I just did 
and then in the second chain from the hook I will start my slip stitch. So I stick my hook under both loops of the chain, yarn over, pull through the stitch, and pull through the loop on the hook at the same time. The next stitch, I'm going to insert my hook under both loops, yarn over, pull through the stitch, and pull through the loop on the hook. And I'm just going to do that all the way down. Okay, so I've slip stitched all the way back down, so I need to bring this down and attach it to make the loop. So what I'm going to do is go back into that stitch that I um, started at, and I'm going to insert my hook into that stitch. I'm also going to insert it into the end of that loop that I just made. Let's see if I can do this. Make sure your yarn's out of your way. Insert it into the end of that little tail. And then yarn over, pull through that tail, pull through that stitch, pull through the loop on the hook. And that will tack that down. And now I'm going to fasten it off. I'm going to leave a good amount of tail. And what I'm going to use this tail for is um, after I put the cuff on, I'm going to come back and to hide this end, I'm actually going to kind of go back and forth between the loop and the stocking. So to hide the end, but also kind of reinforce this a little bit. But I'm going to do that after because I don't want to, I don't want to be in the way of where I want to put my cuff. So I'm just going to tuck that loop inside for now. Let me zoom out. I'm going to tuck that inside for now because I'm going to do my cuff now. All right, so I'm ready to add my cuff. So what I'm going to do, um, I want my cuff to fold down and lay on top. I don't want the cuff to be the exact same width as the stocking, or else when I fold it down, it will kind of bunch up. So I want to make my cuff just a little bit wider than my stocking here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach the white yarn, the contrasting yarn, and I'm going to do a round of single crochets. And I'm going to do probably four increases for this size stocking. I think four works. For a larger stocking, you might want to add a few more than four. Um, but basically, I'm just going to go around a row of single crochets, and every fourth of the way around, I'm just going to do an increase. So two single crochets in each. That will give me, instead of 24 stitches around, it will give me 28 stitches around. And I think that's just enough to make the cuff just a little bit wider. Especially with the rib stitch for the cuff, it can kind of constrict a little bit and you'll end up having a like a tight cuff when you go to fold it down. So um, on this one, actually, I did the last row of, of the red I did in a single crochet and I put the increases. I forgot to do that. So we're going to do it with the white. It doesn't really matter. So I'm going to attach the yarn here and I'm going from the inside because that's the way that the cuff works best. I think it makes it look a little bit neater on the top edge where you're going to see it. Um, so I'm just going to attach my yarn and then I'm going to put one single crochet in each stitch around. And then like I said, every so often, four times around total, I'm going to do an increase. So I'll do it in this next stitch. I'm just going to insert my hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull two through two, single crochet made. In the same stitch, I'm going to put a second single crochet. And then for the next little run, I'm going to do one single crochet in each stitch. Okay, and now I'm going to do my second increase, two single crochets in the same stitch. And then just continue around in the same way all the way around. Okay, when you get all the way to where the, the loop is attached, that stitch has the loop attached there, but I still want to get a single crochet in there. So I'm actually going to go there's the loop. I'm going to go kind of in between the loop. 
so that I can get in there and get a single crochet in that stitch. Then move the loop to the side to get to the next stitch. And the last stitch. And then I'm going to slip stitch to join right at that first single crochet. That's what it looks like. <clears throat> now we're going to do the actual cuff, which is going to be done in the rib stitch. And it's done in rows that are perpendicular to these rows. So we're actually going to go up and then back down, attach it to the stocking, go up and back down and attach it to the stocking. So the rows are going to be like this. And we're going to attach it to the stocking as we're doing it. So it's not a separate piece that we attach. It's done all at the same time. Now when you go up and you come down, that's actually two rows. So you need to attach it to the stocking two times and then go up again, come down again, attach it over two stitches. So that's what we'll do. The number of um, stitches in the rows for the rib is going to be just determined how, how wide you want your cuff. So for mine, I did, I want to do it 10 stitches tall. And if your stocking is bigger or smaller, then you just adjust it. Or if you want it to be wider or narrower, you just adjust it. So I would suggest doing um, whatever number you think works. Do a few rows and then fold it down and it'll give you an idea of how the cuff will look on the stocking. All right, so we're still attached here, so I'm going to go ahead and start my chain. I want my rib to be uh, 10 stitches wide, so I'm going to chain 11. So I'll have my 10 for my stitches and then one for turning chain. So I'll just start, chain, just yarn over, pull through the loop. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Now I'm going to turn my work and we're going to work down the back loops. You see you have your two loops here. You have your front loop, the one that's closest to you, and your back loop, the one that's farthest from you. So we're going to work down the back loop. So we're going to do single crochets down this chain working in the back loop. So the first chain from the hook is going to be skipped. That's our turning chain. The next chain is where we're going to work. So we're going to go just in the back loop. There. I'm going to zoom in. It seems like when I zoom in, it's a little blurry, so I don't know if it's better to be zoomed out and clear or zoomed in and blurry. But, uh, this is my back loop. This is my front loop. I'm going to insert my hook in the back loop, yarn over, pull up a loop, and yarn over and pull through two. So that's a single crochet made. The next stitch, I have my back loop, my front loop. So I'm going to work just in the back loop. Yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Next stitch. Okay, this is my last stitch going in the back loop, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through. Okay, so now this is the stitch that um, we started at. We went up, we came back down. This is the next stitch. I'm just going to put a single crochet in that next stitch. Like that. And I'm going to put a single crochet in the next stitch. And that just uh, tacks these rows down to the stocking. Now we're going to turn our work like this, and we're going to go back up these rows, and we're going to go in the back loop. So now these are the back loops, the ones that are farthest from you. These are your front loops. Zoom out just a little bit. I don't know if it's just my viewfinder, but it seems like it's a little blurry. Hopefully you can see. All right, so this is our first stitch right here. Insert your hook into the back loop. Do a single crochet. Might be helpful to count as you're going or count every few rows to make sure you're not adding or losing stitches. 
So if you do, then the top edge of your cuff will be not straight and even. Once you get a few rows and you actually have something to hold on to while you're inserting the hook into that back loop, it makes it a lot easier. The first few rows, just need to get through them. Back at the top, I have one last stitch here. And now I'm going to chain one, I'm going to turn my work, and I'm going to go back down. And of course, skip that turning chain and just work in the stitches. the last stitch. Now I'm going to tack it down onto the stocking. So in the next stitch I'm going to single crochet and in the next stitch I'm going to single crochet. Turn my work. Now we're going to go that way. Single crochet in the back loop. Up the row. get to the top. I'm going to chain one, turn the work, now we're going to go back down. Just do this over and over again until you've gone all the way around. Alright, before you get too far, let's uh, just fold it over, see what it's going to look like, make sure it's as wide as I want it. I think that will look nice. So I'm going to continue doing rows. Um, I'm going to go up, chain one, turn, go down, attach, attach, go up, chain one, turn, go down, attach, attach. Do that all the way around until you get back where you started. I wanted to show you, I've come back down, I tacked into the top of the stocking, and I wanted to just show you so that this there's no confusion. This, These two stitches are the single crochets into the stocking. You're not going to be um, doing anything in those stitches. We're going to skip those stitches. So make sure when you're starting your um, your single crochets in the back loop, you're only doing it on these 10 stitches up the stocking. So I want to make sure that's clear. And like I said, counting um, at each row, or at least every few rows, or if you notice that it seems like it's getting larger or smaller, just count your stitches and make sure you're not losing stitches somewhere or picking up extra stitches somewhere. Alright, so I've come or back around to the beginning and I've come down the row on the cuff and I need to attach it to the stocking and I actually only have one stitch left. If you end up with two stitches, that's great, then you just tack it down to the last two stitches like we have been doing, but I only have one stitch, I'm just going to have to make it work. It just depends on how many stitches you have around um, and if you like missed any stitches or if you added an extra stitch when you did that row of single crochets. But either way, we can make it work. So I'm just going to tack it down to that last stitch. And now I'm going to go back up this to make one last um, row here on the cuff. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up the front and the back together like that. And as I go up, I'm going to go up here. It's going to close that up, kind of sew that seam up. And the way that I'm going to do it is I'm just going to do single crochet. So I'm going to go into the back loop here like I have been doing, but then I'm also going to go across to the corresponding um, stitch on the, like this was the first row that we did. Now the first row that we did, we already worked into the back loop, so there should only be one loop available. So we're going into the back loop of the row we just completed and also into the, the only available loop on the next like side there and then yarn over, pull up a ute loop, yarn over, pull through two. You could also just uh, fasten off this white, leaving a long tail, and use your, your little blunt needle and just kind of whip stitch this together to make it seamed up so that it closes this cuff.
as long as you didn't add or lose any stitches you should have the same 10 stitches that you started with so you should have corresponding stitches here to work into okay last stitch okay from here I'm just going to yarn over to fasten off leave yourself enough of a tail to weave in the ends okay so now your stocking is done you just need to weave in your ends fold down your cuff and you're good to go um, you will like I said you'll want to use this red tail or whatever your main color tail is and as you're um, weaving in the ends you just kinda I would just reinforce that where that hanging tab is there so just go into the stitch of the uh, loop and into the stocking go around a little bit go back into the loop one of the stitches of the loop like that and maybe on the other side go back down back into the stocking it's probably overkill but it's fine That way we don't have to worry about it coming loose. Right, so just hide the rest of your ends, clip off all your excess tails, and your stocking is complete. Super cute. All right, hopefully you enjoyed the tutorial and you were able to follow along. You can leave any questions or comments down below. I'd love to hear from you. If you make it, I'd love to see your pictures. You can find me on Instagram and Facebook. Um, I think that's about it. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Have a good one.